Sure, the Gilmore girls had their flaws, but that doesn't mean the guys should get away with a slap on the wrist. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 times the guys from Gilmore Girls were the worst. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at instances when the male characters on Gilmore Girls came off as possessive, obnoxious, and even abusive. To be fair, some of these men aren't without their redeeming qualities, but these moments will always be blemishes on their character arcs. Number 10. What's a Rune? Oh, uh, Lorelai, this is my cousin Rune. Rune, this is Lorelai. Hi, it's very nice to meet you. Can I talk to you a minute? Suki and Jackson's first date evolves into a double date when Jackson is forced to drag along his pesky cousin Rune. Lorelai, being a good friend, agrees to be Rune's blind date, even though she's evidently out of his league. Yet it's Rune who inexplicably has an issue with Lorelai's appearance. Seriously, dude? In addition to being rude, Rune is anything but discreet, seeing how Lorelai overhears every word that comes out of his big mouth. That's Lorelai? Yes. Did you see how tall she is? No, I haven't noticed, actually. How could you not notice? She's like a basketball player. Rune, she's a very nice lady. Rune spends the evening looking at his watch and treating Lorelai like she has the plague. Is there anything on this menu that isn't French? I'll just have a martini and keep them coming. Meanwhile, Lorelai winds up chatting with Luke for most of the night, which thankfully pushes Rune to finally leave Suki and Jackson alone. Okay, I'm really bored. Sit down, we're about ready to order. I don't want to order. I don't want to eat here. I want to go. Rune? Jackson! Look, I came out with you tonight under the impression that I'd have fun. Number 9. Graham's Date with Rory And you don't have a boyfriend? Not really. Why do you? Making a joke. I was just wondering, we haven't talked about your love life in a while. I get to ask sometimes, don't I? Um, sure. It's rarely a good sign when Emily Gilmore tries to set you up with somebody. Graham Sullivan. You haven't met him? I don't think so. Would you like to? Sure. Is now okay? Now? Graham! Graham, this is Rory. Rory, Graham. Hi. Hi. Unlike Rune, Graham at least seems interested in Rory when they first meet, but he ultimately ends up being a total putz. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, I just taped up eight of my own boxes. I'm a box taping machine. Use me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so uh, the plans for tonight, they're pretty casual. There'll be about 10 of us. You're totally welcome to come. With some slight hesitance, Rory decides to go out with Graham. Scratch that, she goes out with Graham and his beer buddies. And you know it's always totes fun to be the only sober one in a group. Graham dedicates most of his night to talking with his bros about sports, leaving Rory alone at a table. Then when Graham finally acknowledges Rory, he has the nerve to tell her to live a little and endorses drunk driving. A putz indeed. He's driving? He's one of the best drunk drivers in Connecticut. Top 50, easy. <laughs> you ready? Actually, I just think I'm gonna take off. What? Yeah, I'm kinda tired. <laughs> Rory. Thanks for everything. Number eight, Marty lying to Lucy. Hi, <laughs> I'm uh, Marty. Um, <laughs> Rory. Marty starts off sympathetic. After all, many of us can identify with liking somebody, knowing full well you'll perpetually be in the friend zone. Rory and Marty have a falling out after he confesses his true feelings, but she rejects him in favor of Logan. Rory, I feel like I really need to tell you something. Okay. Um, I know we're friends, and I'm glad we're friends, but I don't want to be just friends anymore. I like you. In season seven, it's revealed that Marty is now dating Rory's new friend, Lucy. For some reason, Marty feels the need to lie to Lucy, pretending he's never met Rory. You have to meet Rory. Rory, this is boyfriend. Oh, I- Actually, it's Marty. Nice to meet you. You too. This just shows that Marty hasn't matured since freshman year, and he's still hung up on a girl who will never reciprocate his feelings. When the cat inevitably comes out of the bag, Marty destroys his relationship with Lucy while nearly ruining Rory's friendship with her. What, 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 do you, what is he talking about? Lucy. You guys know each other? Number seven, William rejecting Rory. Following a bad date, Rory happens into a meet cute with a fellow student named William. 
Oh, um. Yeah? I, I think my clothes were in there. Oh, yeah, somebody had already dumped them out, so I put them in my basket to keep them clean. Hope you don't mind. While their encounter is brief, Rory senses a spark between them and asks him out for coffee. As if Rory's night couldn't get any worse, William straight up turns her down with no explanation. I don't think so, but thanks. William resurfaces in a later episode where Rory believes that he's been telling people about the laundry room incident, leading others to believe that she's obsessed with him. So like three seconds later, she asks him out. Of course he said no, but I guess to her no doesn't mean no, so now she's showing up everywhere he is. As it turns out, William was actually talking about another girl who really was stalking him. Regardless, that doesn't change the fact that he straight up rejected Rory friggin Gilmore. Who does that? I know you've been telling the story. What story? The laundry room story. Remember the laundry room? Machines, rinse cycle. I asked you to get coffee. That's it. Number six, Jason suing Richard. Despite wanting to distance herself from the upper class lifestyle her parents have always imposed, Lorelai is drawn to Jason Styles, a business partner of Richard's. Mixing business with pleasure is often a recipe for disaster, and it's no different here. To tell me that Richard's going back into business with my father? What? Jason. Initially, Richard and Jason conspire against Jason's father, Floyd Styles. When Floyd catches wind of this, he strikes up a deal with Richard that'll leave Jason in the dust. I did what I had to do. We can certainly understand why Jason would feel betrayed, but he takes things too far when he decides to sue Richard. Talk to me. You were going to tell me something. I'm suing your father. For all the issues Lorelai has with her parents, she draws the line at litigation. In the end, Jason chooses a lawsuit over Lorelai. I can't be with someone who's suing my family. Lorelai, come on. I'm sorry. Number five, Luke not telling Lorelai about April. You're Luke Danes. Yes, kid, I'm Luke Danes. What the hell are you wearing? A bike helmet. For what kind of bike? A Schwinn. April is widely seen as a shark jumping moment, given how others respond to her. Giving Luke a 12-year-old daughter he never knew about was already pretty forced. But what's even more forced is that Luke doesn't immediately inform his fiance. Luke keeps saying that he'll tell Lorelai when the time is right, but of course she finds out from someone else. I'm sorry. She takes the news better than most would, and is even open to postponing the wedding for Luke. When Luke refuses to meet Lorelai's ultimatum, though, she winds up sleeping with Christopher. While Luke isn't the only person at fault here, a lot of heartbreak could have been avoided if he just communicated with Lorelai. Yeah, we're still not over that. No, I'm not waiting. It's now or never. I don't like ultimatums. I don't like Mondays, but unfortunately, they come around eventually. I can't just jump like this. Number four, Jess pressuring Rory. You're not tired of me, are you? That's a pretty good answer. Jess would later develop into one of Rory's healthier love interests, but that's where he started. Early in their courtship, Jess was either pushing her away or pressuring her into something she didn't want. Case in point, a party where Jess attempts to have sex with Rory, who's made it clear she isn't ready. Just wait. Just wait. This results in one of their biggest blow-ups, as well as a fight between Jess and Dean. Jess subsequently leaves Stars Hollow without giving Rory a proper goodbye. Jess is gone. Gone where? When Jess returns the following year, he seemingly has a breakthrough when he tells Rory he loves her. The minute Jess re-enters Rory's life, however, he runs away again, which becomes a recurring habit. What do you have to say to me? I love you. Number three. Logan cheating on his fiance with Rory. How was your day? Well, I had my dry cleaning delivered. Oh, I think I win. I don't know, I really like these pants. In between one of his breakups with Rory, it's revealed that Logan slept with multiple women and sucked face with another. To Logan's credit, they were technically on a break and he does fully commit to Rory after some turbulence. Logan's growth as a romantic partner is largely undone in a year in the life, however where he engages in an ongoing affair with Rory despite having a fiancé. Look, we have an agreement. What happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas. As if cheating on a woman who loves him isn't shallow enough, Logan seemingly feels no guilt about his unfaithfulness. Are you really gonna marry Odette? 
That's the dynastic plan. Of course, Rory isn't much better since she has a boyfriend she keeps forgetting to break up with. And it doesn't help that Logan's act of infidelity might have resulted in Rory's pregnancy. Mom? Yeah. I'm pregnant. Number 2. Dean and Rory Consummating Their Relationship Rory gets a lot of flack for sleeping with a married Dean, as she should. You're my friend, right? For many, this was the point where Rory becomes a much more self-absorbed, self-destructive character. But Dean carries just as much blame, if not more. After all, he's the one who married Lindsay, despite still having feelings for Rory. It's not working with Lindsay. I can't make it work. He's the one who continually led Lindsay on, despite clearly not being ready to be a husband. He's the one who kept tiptoeing around the elephant in the room, making it all the more devastating when he committed adultery. Things happen for a reason, right? Right. While Dean would learn from his mistakes and have a more successful second marriage, the way he treated Lindsay remains inexcusable. Well, well, well of all the gin joints in all the world, hey. it's so good to see you. Uh, you too. What are you doing in Stars Hollow? Okay, raincoats and recipes gave me everything I wanted and did not want. I'm so conflicted about that episode still. Anyway, while I go down a rage spiral about Rune, feel your blood boil during these dishonorable mentions. Jackson, I thought you got a vasectomy. Oh, so she says go get a vasectomy and I'm just supposed to go get a vasectomy? Well, no, you shouldn't do it if you didn't want to do it, but if you didn't want to do it, you should have told her you didn't want to do it. I didn't see the point. I could even help you study if you want. Um, I kind of view studying as a solitary activity, <sighs> but thanks. <laughs> Bye, Mary. It's Rory. Said our streets are so wild and out of control. If you ask me, yes, and I have proof. What are these? Surveillance photos of town goings on. The dark side of Stars Hollow, Luke, not a pretty picture. A riot of color. Geeky, but cool. Ever been to Italy? No. <laughs> yes? What am I saying? Yes, I was just there. Duh. Hard thing to forget. Yeah, I'm just so used to not having been anywhere, but yeah. I have. <laughs> Principles of natural philosophy. Oh, you got a letter from April. I was two hours into deciphering it, and then I got your call. Hello, Peter. My father, British or Latin? Number one, everything Christopher. Honestly, was anybody on Team Christopher? After impregnating Lorelai as a teenager, he was rarely around for her, or Rory. Granted, it's partly because Lorelai refused to get married. So I guess we should get married. Even years later, however, Christopher remains a mostly absentee parent, both to Rory and his other daughter, Gigi. Congratulations, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Worst of all, Christopher always re-enters Lorelai's life just when she's starting to find happiness with someone else, namely Luke. Christopher has been pressured by others into interfering with Lorelai's love life. And sometimes, Lorelai has even come to him. I'm with Lorelai. For now. What does that mean, for now? What is that, a threat? Lorelai and I belong together. Everyone knows it. I know it. Emily knows it. What? Chris never considers what's best for Lorelai, though, jumping at every opportunity to take advantage of her. Whenever Christopher showed up, we knew trouble was following. You okay? Uh, I'm having a really bad night, and um, I still want to be alone. Okay? Yeah. Uh, come on in. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.